and entrepreneurs make sure you stay tuned for this video because I talk about the 10 things that I should have known before I became a construction entrepreneur enjoy now What's up, my construction entrepreneurs? Tyrone Jones with the Construction Entrepreneur School and Services. Here, I'm bringing you 10 things I wish I knew before I became a construction entrepreneur. This is some things that people was never even sharing with me, right? So, let's get to it. Um, now, why did I become a construction entrepreneur, right? Uh, main reason was to have greater control over my time and to work in my pajamas. Let's be honest here. You know, I wanted to work in my pajamas, enjoy my backyard, and do nothing. No. The pajamas part is not true, but having greater ownership of my time, true, okay? Learn more. I felt I can learn more. The travel, I wanted to travel young, right? I didn't want to travel when I was old and hunchback and muscles hurt and bones ache or whatever condition I was going to be in, right? That was the vision I had. I was like, I want to travel when I'm young so I can do more and enjoy more and experience more of the travel experience versus me being older and not being able to experience more, you know? Um, and that's, that's what I really wanted. And plus, this was in my blood to be a, an entrepreneur. It took me a long time. Now, you know, there's people out there that says, hey, you know what? I was an entrepreneur since I was knee high to a duck ass. Not me, okay? I did work early on when I was young for my grandfather in this uh, landscaping business, which was great. Um, but then time passed. And, uh, as you guys know, my story, I went to jail and, and in jail, I created another business that took over the entire yard, what they call it. Uh, I used to braid hair. Uh, and some people don't know that about me. Right. So I braided hair and I charged more than what the average person would charge. And that was really my second business, a business I started in jail to help feed me because, uh, my mom was a single mom. Uh, I was the older of three kids and she could not send me money. So that started. And when I got out, I got a regular job like everyone else and tried to move up in those jobs and then wound up getting into the construction industry and then uh, it took me a while to fall in love with it. But once I fell in love with it, I started doing researches and figure out I can be a uh, an owner and control my own time and destiny. And that's what I did, you know? Um, and then, there's things along that journey that I wish people would have told me, right? Because there was times where um, with different owners, I'll call them and I'll ask them, you know, hey, how'd you do this? Hey, what should I do about this? Hey, what is this? You know, and at times I, would, I was not asking the right question. I know I wasn't because I didn't know any better, right? But at the same time, those owners did not tell me what I need to know to start that journey. They did not share with me. Um, a lot of times they'll share like one or two bad instances, you know, but they didn't even talk about the details of the journey, you know, uh, uh, the do's, the don'ts, things that you should know, you know, things that they realized at a certain point in their business, you know, or before they started their business, that would have been helpful. Uh, but I didn't get that, you know, I didn't have the owners around me to, to, to tell me that. So, um, that led me to my tip number one here. Nobody knows what they're doing. Okay. A lot of these owners sitting around here, uh, they got a smile on their face, but there's a very small percentage of construction entrepreneurs that's out there that's being successful at this. Very small. Okay. I even have my deep downs and great ups, deep downs, great ups, you know, and I'm still trying to figure out a way to maintain that. Um, and for me, my greatest thing is to uh, get into contracts. Um, with knowing with my other partnership, uh, where my partner was doing $50 million 
uh, 50 to $70 million uh, a year, right? And I know being in contracts, you have more flexibility with your money. So I'm trying to get to a contract stage so I can have more flexibility with my money and grow my business in a different way, okay? That way I can take a vacation and my business can still run. You know, that way I can, you know, uh, 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 decide to take my kids to Disney World and my business can still run. Right. And, I, and that's where that having greater uh, control over my time come in. Right. And being able to do what I want to do. Because why? Why do we get into this choices and options? One and the same. OK, we want to have more choices and options. That's it. Right. That's what it really boils down to. You can say whatever you want, greater time. Uh, uh, I don't want a boss or whatever it is. OK. Choices and options. OK. And then, of course, abundance. Right. We want to have that freedom. We want to have that 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 uh, that uh, uh, that success with abundance, abundance in, in all aspects of my life. You know, not just money, but in love, and family, and kids and, you know, loved ones and, you know, and everything that's around us is just abundant, you know, and that's what we want to do. But we got to realize that some people that we talk to don't know what the they're doing. And they think they do. Some owners don't even realize their numbers. Some owners don't even realize how they got from here to there. You know, and what did you have to learn to get to there? Now, mind you, some owners have, they grew their business in a different time, right? Uh, uh, but I'm talking about today, you know, the owners that have the, the, the um, they're in a position to know these things. Uh, there's a lot of businesses out here that, you know, if you go to conferences, you'll talk to every construction entrepreneur and I guarantee you ask them, how is business? Business is good. Business is real good. Matter of fact, hey, you know, I just hired this girl in the office. She's doing real good, too. She's bringing in a few sales. Well, the, but, uh, 99, maybe I should go to 97. 97% of those construction entrepreneurs are lying. Are lying. That's what we should go to these conferences and we should ask people, what is your labor burden? What is your labor burden percentage? What is your, do you have a locked in profit percentage that you, that you charge? Is there a range, you know, from uh, uh, 10 to 12%, 10 to 15%, you know, we should start asking percentages, right? Uh, 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 what is your, uh, 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 what is your overhead rate, you know, and what has it been, has it changed over the last three months, six months, you know, we should be talking about those things so we can get something out of the conversation, just hearing this fluff about how well business is doing well. All right, let's jump into this. Uh, everyone running the business, everyone, they, they go, it's, 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 it's an educated guess. And a lot of you that have uh, watched a lot of my videos, I talk about prediction in business. Okay. And I wish someone would have told me that a lot of this is about prediction. It's about educated guesses based on your experience and the information that you have. Right. That's what a lot of it is. It's based on your experience. What information have you gained over the years? Right. What have you learned from this company, that company, this individual, uh, uh, this mentor, uh, this business person, no matter the industry, you take all that. And that's how you make your decisions. They're educated guesses, right? If you're making a lot of, if you're making a lot of your decisions based on things that are happening already, then you're behind and you'll always be behind and you'll never get ahead. You have to predict, right? And predicting this, looking ahead and figuring out what you need to do, how you need to do it. What is the next move? And a lot of these C CEOs uh, uh, of these large companies, uh, as you see here, I got independent freelancers. I don't care who it is. Us as construction entrepreneurs, it's educated guesses. Simply, just like that. And I wish someone would have told me that, that I need to get better at looking ahead. Looking ahead and making the best effort to make the best decision for me, my business, and my family. And I, I, don't, I don't think we do that enough, you know? <laughs> so this one here, doing this is hard, right? But doing it alone is even harder. It's harder doing it alone. This is why I'm a big fan of partnerships. I love partnerships. Now, 
some people out there are not a fan of partnerships and some people have grown big businesses without partnerships, okay? But I guarantee you, they have some form of a partnership, right? Partnerships doesn't just mean I own 50%, you own 50%. I've been in partnerships where I have had own 5%, where I've owned 2% of the business, right? Um, uh, where different things have, 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 have uh have happened on that. So partnerships is just not about uh, if, uh, a 50, 50 split. So those companies that have grown their business without partnerships, I, I guarantee you they had to have a right hand man. Okay. Uh, that's your partner without any equity into the company. Why? Because they're taking care of a lot of things that you can't take care of, whether they're out in the field, making things run smoothly, or whether they are taking care of the admin side while you're out in the field, making things run smoothly. There's a team, that you need to grow this. And this is why I'm a fan of partnerships. Now, having a partnership over the years, I realized that um, uh, it helps you carry some of this burden, right? Peer burden, okay? But it's great when you have a partner that's different from you, right? You're the nice guy. He's the, you know, kind of dig in straight, straightforward, tell like it is guy. That's, it's a good combo and it goes well. So you don't want to have two people of the same. Okay? And that's what makes a great partnership. And it's easy to deal with a lot of stress alone. It, 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 some of you that has been in this game for a while, been a construction entrepreneur, especially starting out, you realize straight off that, hey, man, this thing is not easy. It's tough. And a lot of times you wish you had someone to share those stressful moments with. Okay? That's why a lot of people come to my channel because I share and I talk about those times uh, that it gets tough. Right. Those times that is great. And those times that you just need to know that you need to reach out, you know, and sometimes I'm that guy that you can reach out and listen to and realize, hey, I'm not the only one going through it because I know I'm not the only one going through it as well. Right. So uh, 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 having someone that can be there with you, work with you on that, uh, it's a great thing. Um, that don't mean that you have to get a partner. But that does mean that, you know, you've got to find someone that can help you grow this thing and, and help you go at this thing as a team, you know. So you have to build that core group of teams, okay. Uh, um, um, and, and that's just it, you know, and that's, that's the key there. So number three here. Um, <laughs> this, this one here is very important because as construction entrepreneurs, we tend to – be consumed with all these creative ideas that go through our head. Okay. We got a lot of thoughts. Uh, uh, some of you probably write them down. Some of you probably record them into your phone every time they pop up. Uh, some of you have a book. I used to have this, uh, my wife bought me this um, Think Big book, right? I don't know where the hell it's at right now. Okay. But anyway, it was a great book. I used to write down all my thoughts in there um, uh, because I had so many thoughts, right? And I did a video on that too, right? Um, as construction entrepreneurs, we have a wandering eye, but we have to remember, it took me such a long time. This, this, this topic here is it, 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 it makes me rant. All right. It makes me just, just continue to talk and go on, but we have to stay focused on our goal. Let's, uh, uh, follow Warren Buffett five, 25 rule, five, 25 rule. Okay. Warren Buffett says, write down 25 things, 25 goals for the day. Okay. Write down 25 goals, right? So the most important, write down 25 goals. Circle the top five and trash the rest. Don't touch it. Don't do anything. Now, mind you, you can't have any puny goals here, right? And we're not talking about mixing short term goals with long term goals. You know, I'm talking about on the daily expect. And then you can also do it short term and long term if that works out for you, okay? But on a daily basis, um, uh, we get distracted easily. So you have to remember to stay focused on your goal. Write down the 25 things to do, circle the top five, and get rid of the rest. Stay focused on it. It's very important that you stay focused on it. I remember when when I was out and I was doing it, um, I used to um, get distracted easily. I mean, it anything would distract me. Someone called me about um, uh, it could be a different type of business, 
And as long as I see his money making into it, I'm off. Okay. So things that don't contribute to your goal, give them up. Okay. You, if you're in this game, if you, you have decided to get a construction entrepreneur, you're going to be going for your license. You already have your license. You start your business. You got jobs going. What if it's small jobs, big jobs, medium jobs? It doesn't care. Stay focused on your goal. Okay. Once you stay focused on your goal, you know, hey, I can't do that. I need to stay with this. And no one didn't tell me that. No one didn't tell me that. I thought being a construction entrepreneur that you had to be a serial entrepreneur. And I was all involved in everything. And I thought it was great. But come a year, I had nothing to show for. There was nothing I stayed with. Okay. And a year, here it is. I'm back in, I'm back doing construction after I didn't did janitorial, after I didn't did uh, trying to be a salesman for someone else or, you know, Stay focused on your goal. It's very important. Stay focused on your goal. So here's a book here, okay? And this is how I stay focused on my goal. And I went a bit extreme with mine, okay? I did a little bit too much. And it doesn't mean that it's not right, okay? And it may not be right for you. But it wasn't right for me. But a lot of people suffer, okay? That don't mean I see it as wrong. But what I did when I read that book, The Construction Entrepreneur, by the way, that book, I didn't get the title of my school from that book. At least I don't think. Maybe on the subconscious level. Um, I did not read that book in full. But um, a lot of things in that book was ahead of my time. Okay. They talk about a lot of numbers, uh, workers comp. It's a really, I think it's a really great book. Matter of fact, I might order it and, and get back on it. Uh, uh, maybe only if they got an audio version, because I don't do a lot of reading of books. But anyway, the one thing I got from this book was um, to be selfish. Okay. Now, mind you, I took it literal. I turned out to be selfish within my business. That means that any birthday parties. So I only went to my kids' birthday party. I didn't go to cousins, aunts, nephews, nieces, I didn't go to any other birthday party except my kids. Okay. I didn't go to any, I didn't go to no doctor's appointments for my kids. I worked. I was selfish within my business. And during the time my ex, right, my wife during that time suffered. She had to, and and I didn't sit her down and explain this to her. I didn't have that communication talk with her about how I'm going to go all in on this and be selfish at it. And I need you to pick up my slack. I didn't do that. I just went all in on it. And, and, um, and it, 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 it helped me get ahead. It really did. And I, and I really, I don't regret it, but uh, definitely you got to communicate, you know, you, you, you have to. OK, uh, if you're going to go if you're going to go all in like that, you have to. And and that's what helped me go all in. And I literally I was out working when I came home. I was working. I was uh, also teaching myself how to use the computer during that time. OK, because uh, I didn't know how to really use. I didn't know how to send emails. I was learning that. I didn't know how to use Word, Excel. You know, I was learning that. So um you know, I was, I was really trying to teach myself uh, the things I need to know. And now I realize how much that benefit me. You know, there's a lot of construction owners out there that don't know how to send out emails, that don't know how to, you know, uh, uh, operate in Word document or operate Excel or even understands the functions of Excel, you know. And I think that's something that, you know, you, you need to learn, you know, because we use it a lot within our business. Excuse me. All right, number four, that uh, I wish I would have known before I became a construction entrepreneur. All right, um, failure, it's coming. It's, it's, you're not going to get away from it. It's coming. If it hasn't come, then you haven't done enough. Then you're staying low key and you're not doing the things that you need to do to put yourself out there to experience failure. Um, Someone left a comment um, on one of the videos. Uh, this guy named is Jason. I've done uh, classes with him. We've done conferences together. Uh, I have an interview there with him uh, on my channel too as well. And he says, uh, failure, failure breeds success. And this is so true. But for failure to breed success, 
you have to learn to forgive yourself. And that comes with self-awareness, right? We, we know what we're going to do, what we can do, and what we're not going to do. You have to be honest with yourself. When you're in this, you have to be honest with yourself. Because what you being honest with yourself is going to help you forgive yourself a lot quicker, a lot faster, and understand your motives. Okay? So you have to get to a place where you can forgive yourself for the failures because they're going to happen. Okay? I fall off. Sometimes I don't do uh, the things that I need to do at the time I do them. Right? And I know I'm not going to do them. Right? But I have self-awareness to where I know beforehand that I wasn't going to do it. And a lot of times I'll tell people like, nope, no, I'm not doing that. But you need to. I know I do, but I'm just not going to do it. Maybe I'll take care of it on Sunday. Maybe. If not, then Monday we'll hunker down and we'll get to it. But forgive yourself. Okay? You got a lot of people around you, depending on you, waiting on you, expecting you to be great. And that pressure is just immense amount of pressure that we put on ourselves. A burden that sometimes it just weighs us down and our shoulders are slumped and, 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 and sometimes we get anxiety and, and we wake up and we feel in, we don't even know why we're, why we're sad. Have you experienced that? You don't even know why you're sad. You know, and you're like, oh, because it's, it's because I, I, I did that wrong or because I did that wrong or because I didn't follow through with that or because I did this or did that. I, I, I don't know. When, when you got that, it's a little bit of everything, you know, and, and, and you got to stop being so hard on yourself. It's great. I, I, and, and, and I don't mean for you to take that literally because you have to be hard on yourself to, to move forward. But for the failures. You know, a lot, a lot of people say that, you know, I took an L. I, I learned from that. Not a loss. I learned from that. Okay. So learn to forgive yourself. And I wish one of those owners I was talking to uh, that didn't really know nothing told me that, you know, because I was so down on myself when I failed. And it took me a lot longer time to get up, especially during that time I wasn't in personal development. That's another thing. If you're not in personal development and you're an, an entrepreneur, not just a construction entrepreneur, you're not in personal development, you need to get on that. Okay? Because you need to put a lot of that back in you because you give out so much. Okay? So failure. Do not allow this thing to get you here. All right, number five. Study business management. Okay? You're going to lie. You're going to... You, and <laughs> this here... Is, is what I say here. If you work for a company right now, a construction company, and you're looking to become, excuse me, a construction entrepreneur, you're looking to own your own business, look as, as that job, look as it, as if they're paying you to go to school. And if they're paying you to go to school, they're probably paying you way too much. So it's a plus. And that's the way I looked at it. When I used to work for this company back in the day called Creedar, um, doing construction, once I changed it, because I wasn't, I wasn't overly happy there, right? I, I, it wasn't crazy for me. It wasn't like it was something that I was like, oh, man, this is my dream job. No, we wasn't getting paid on time. The guy, he appears... Um, He'll pay us a uh, half on Friday and the other half on Monday to make sure we showed up, you know. Um, but when I looked at it, and I was getting paid real low because this was years ago, right? But when I when I turned around, I looked at this as if it was someone paying me to go to school to learn about construction. It turned around my whole perspective on this. I started operating the backhoe because we was doing a lot of custom homes. Matter of fact, in the area that I stay in now. Right. We worked in Duluth. Uh, I live in the Marietta, Temecula area, Wildemar area. But we worked in Temecula in the Duluth area where you had to have a minimum of five acres to build a home. And we did a lot of custom foundations, a lot of driveways, a lot of decorative concrete. And uh, once I turned that around, I started doing more within that industry. I started learning how to lay out houses. started learning how to lay out the plumbing. I started learning how to dig the footings right after I laid them out. I started learning how to dig the fittings, read the plans, how to square up a house, um, uh, how to hang forms. I used to stay late and operate the backhoe, 
right? I learned how to operate equipment, which led to me now knowing hydraulics. So I can literally hop on any type of equipment and learn it. But I can operate a backhoe crane. Uh, uh, I haven't operated a crane before, but a, a large excavator, mini excavator, um, any size backhoe, um, anything with hydraulics, a boring machine. Uh, I mean, several different things. But it all started for me, you know, turning that perspective into as, as, as if I was, they were paying me to go to school. They, was paying, they were paying me to teach me, right? I just needed to take the initiative to learn those different things, right? And, and, and some of you not in a position or in a company that allows you to, to venture into those different areas, like where I had uh, uh, operating and where I had this and that, this and that. But when I jumped to a new company uh, during that time, I was able to learn about the business, business management part of it. So if you're not in that position to where you can actually learn from the company that you're in, especially if you're in the union, they keep you down one narrow path, right? But if you're in a, a more of a entrepreneur type business to where, you know, there's no um, union involved and in kind of you wear many hats, then this is the perfect time to study business management. Okay. And you want to make sure you get into that and absorb that and take that as, as, as if you're <laughs> take it as if you're a sponge and absorb it and go out and learn about, especially on the admin side of the business management. Okay. Cause a lot of times us as construction entrepreneurs, all we want to do is things with our hands. And then when it comes time to run our business, we wish we would have took up that opportunity to learn the business management part of it because we need that as construction entrepreneurs starting our business. You need it and you need to understand it. So if you don't have that, then you need to go to the library, you need to get books, you need to watch my videos. Oh, look at that. That's a little plug. When I'm not ashamed of it. Anyway, so you need to watch videos. Go on YouTube. There's a lot of videos about it, okay? Not everyone is getting in depth like I am about uh, uh, the construction business, but there's a lot of great videos on YouTube that deals with business management in the construction industry. And you want to do your study on that and really put that time in to yourself to know more. You, 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 you just must do that. And I wish I would have had someone tell me that. So number six here, okay? prioritize your time. Oh my gosh. It, this one here, uh, it, you know, let me take a little drink of coffee here. Sorry, wasted your two seconds on that one. Listen, prioritize your time. Okay. As, as I said already, we got a wandering eye, but prioritize your time. During the beginning stages of this, Okay. This is before, remember, this is what I, what I wish I knew before I became a construction entrepreneur. Prioritizing my time. Okay. Um, when I first started out, I was doing side jobs, right? I mean, I was doing after work every weekend with side jobs. If you're not doing that, you need to start doing that. How do you find side jobs? You, you, I did a video on finding work. But I'll do another video on finding work uh, before you actually start your business, okay? I'll do a video on that. But look, ask the people, there's people, if you're at a construction, if you work at a construction company, you're thinking about starting your business, there's others in that construction companies that's doing side work. Find those people and ask them how they're getting their work or work with them while, they, while they're doing their side work. And understand the game. You know, every area is different. You know, like for California here, you find work on Craigslist. You look under the labor section and you look under um, the skilled labor, se skilled labor section and the gigs under labors. Okay, I believe that's what it is. So you look under those sections to find, to find work, okay, to, to, to work with other individuals, okay, to work with other homeowners, uh, um, uh, uh, to work wherever you need to work at, but you got to prioritize your time, set that time aside, right? You know that you have a vision, you know that you have a place to go with what you're doing. So there's time for work, there's time for side jobs, there's time for family, prioritize it, lay it out, okay? And you know what meets as a priority and, and, and tend to know things that you need to place on a priority level before they become uh, uh, a rush before they become an, uh, uh, an ASAP now because we didn't place them up here. But prioritize your time. Your time is very important, especially nowadays. And you have so many tools 
so many things that you can use to put your time in a better perspective, okay? Now, if you're looking to grow, you're looking to uh, do this, I wish I would have had someone to tell me prioritize my time because I was all over the place, right? I was... <laughs> I was here, I was there, um, you know, and, and I really should have just been focusing on uh, prioritizing my time, especially after work, you know, and because work took up a, a majority of my time and after work is where I should have put my schedule together. After work where I should have had things really sectioned out and to where I can move on and transition to the next thing and not leave anything behind, you know. And I think just a lot of those owners, they, they weren't doing that. They were pretty jacked up as me. All right, tip number two, um, um, most businesses fail, okay, um, especially starting out. And I, I want to tell you that, okay. It, it, and, and a lot of times these people fail not because they're, they weren't smart, hardworking, hustling, you know, finding things. It's because they made one or two bad decisions at the beginning. OK, so you, you, you got to rely on your strengths. you got to figure out what are your strengths. A lot of us out here don't even know that. Right. When I first started out, I didn't know what my strengths were. I thought my strengths was for putting forms together. <laughs> I thought my strengths was, a, oh, I can, oh, I'm a form setter. I'm a ride buster. Uh, I'm a finisher and I'm an operator. That's what I thought my strengths were. And they weren't at that time. Those were just skills, <laughs> skills that I learned, right? Um, but my strengths was communicating, right? Communicating with people and, 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 and motivating. And, and uh, another thing I realized my strengths was is building businesses, right? I, I can build businesses very well. I could get in, dive in, uh, uh, apply the right things to get the business up up to the next level. Uh, but know your strengths. What are your strengths? W where do you need to apply? And listen to this. This is, this is I'm going to tell you, this is one area that I wish I would have known before I started out as a construction entrepreneur. One bad decision that I made that I see a lot of construction entrepreneurs make and that we don't even talk about, taxes. In the beginning, I ignored because I didn't really um, want to learn about taxes, what was due, who I paid, where does it go, am I making enough to make it, am I making enough to pay it, and it caught up to me in the long run, not paying taxes. Pay your taxes. If you got a corporation, pay your corporation taxes. If you got personal taxes, pay your personal taxes because that will catch up to you in the long run. Okay. It caught up to me in the long run. And it also caught up to a new partnership that I joined, AMW Construction, at the beginning of last year. We joined this uh, company and come to find out months later, uh, we owe more than we initially found out. We did a little due diligence, found out we owe something. And then later on, uh, a, a, a lot more came out. In the end, um, there was a notice on a license that if we didn't pay the franchise tax board and clear up the taxes that they were actually going to take the license away from us. Okay. We were in the middle of doing thousands of dollars of work. So I uh, wound up diving deep into it and realized that uh, there was more old. So in the end, we wound up paying, I want to say about 13 grand. Now, mind you, um, um, that was 13 grand that I wish I would have been able to put in my pocket. Right. So we had to fork that out. Now we had to fork that out because the owner of that license did not neglect it to pay on that. OK. And it was over uh, accumulated over amount of years. OK. So you don't want something like that to bite you in the tail. Now, a lot of people's like, oh, 13 grand is nothing, which is not. But 13 grand is a lot when you're already in business. And that's not something you want to put 13 grand towards. You know, I can go put that in my pocket. I can go buy another truck, uh, put something down on a, uh, another division that I wanted to start or, you know, throw some money at another idea that I have to help grow this business uh, in a way that it's going to take us to the next level. So take care of it. Okay. Remember, there's one or two bad mistakes in the business that really brings us down and really shuts a business down. Okay, one or two simple mistakes 
okay? So you want to be, you really want to be conscious of that, making those bad decisions and realize that if you can't do it, if you don't know it, go seek help. I'm here, you know, call my office. We'll help you. Most people that call, they, they, they get to me. Ask me, okay? Leave me a comment here, okay? If you don't know and it's not your strength, seek help. There's so many things out here where we can get the help from, okay? Zone in. Zone in. Now, you don't have to zone in like I was talking about earlier when I read that book and it had me be selfish in what I was doing. But no, you want to zone in, okay? You want to envision where you want your business to go and write it down, right? Write it down. Okay, I wish I would have wrote it down instead of having all these thoughts rumbling in my head. And then when I get out there, I'm on five or six different tasks and no priority, right? Uh, but zone in on the vision for the future. What do you What do you vision? What, what do you What are you thinking about? Okay, what how you, How would your business look? I remember there was times where. Um, I didn't know, you know, no one told me to zone in, but I was designing business cards. Now, I'm not a big fan of business cards, but during that time, that's what I did. I designed my business cards, you know, and I designed how my business will look, how my trucks will be set up, uh, uh, how my uh, my office will look. And I drew these things out, you know, and it helped me zone in, it helped me visualize it. Because us in, const in construction, we, we're, we're a lot of times we're visual. That's why we, you know, with dealing with plans and everything, we can visualize things uh, uh, and make them come to life. We can see how they look and put those pieces together. So you wanna zone in on your vision and write it down so you can actually see it and, and start moving it around and figuring it out and seeing where it actually needs to be at. Number eight, ha, huh, this one here. Don't lose the nine to five structure. This is something that I lost right off the bat. Okay. What I mean by that is this when you have a regular job, okay, you have to get up five o'clock in the morning. You have to be there at 6 30, you know, or four o'clock in the morning. You have to be there at 7, 6 30 in the morning. You have to be at the yard. You have to load the trucks. You have to do what you need to do fill out your paperwork, look at your order, go out to a job site, right? Then you have to come back home and go to bed so you can get up early and go at it again. What I'm saying is this once you own your own business, I wish somebody would have told me not to lose a nine to five structure. Because once I got to a place where I was like, oh, sucks. Oh, look at my car. It says I'm an owner. And I, I put that on my car. By the way, you, you don't have to, okay? <laughs> I put that on my car. I'm an owner. So I got up whenever I wanted to get up, right? I was like, mm, I'll get up at nine. It's okay. I'm going to put in the time and, and do whatever I want. No. Get up at five. Get up at four, as you have always been doing. Because once you start not following that structure anymore, you start to decline. And you start to take this uh, sort of ownership that you can just do whatever you want to do and you got enough time to do it. No, you need to continue, continue to keep that structure. It's going to help you out in the long run. It's going to help you not fall off. It's going to help you not get into your head of, of, of just that, that, that owner mentality to where you can just do whatever you want. You got to realize you got to grow at this. You got to realize you, you haven't done enough work to have that luxury yet. Okay. I haven't even done that, uh, enough work to have that luxury yet. Okay. Until I can have my business to where, like I said, I'm, I'm having a, a contract where I'm just flowing steadily and, and, and growing over the years. And, you know, I got a steady amount of work come in on a contract basis, then I'll feel better about it. But until then, I am still waking up early, still staying up late and getting up early. And some of you see me on my walk in the mornings and things like that. And sometimes I'm not able to take that walk because I got to go and, and work on uh, an estimate or work on a proposal or go to a job site and things like that. But that is what it is. But having that structure, okay? Don't lose the structure when you start your business. Okay, that's very important. Don't think that you can just wake up whenever the hell you want to because you own this business. Do not lose that structure. Keep that structure. Okay, and that structure is going to pay off all the way in the long run. Continue to get up. Continue to push forward. You have to remember that. Do not lose it. And it's easy to get out of this. It's easy to get out of it. Number nine. 
reach critical mass before quitting your job. Okay. You, you, listen, a lot of us out here, we're, we're doing side works while we're working for another person and we see how well it's going. Okay. Now, listen, just because you're making money, that don't mean it's going well. I mean, reach critical uh, mass success in all areas in the admin side. Okay. That means that you're following your invoices on time. That's another thing that I see we lack in as uh, new construction entrepreneurs. We say we want to get paid, but we don't file our invoices on time. Okay. We're not sending out our proposals on time. Okay. You want to have ton of success in these areas. Okay. Not just completing the job and like, Hey, I, I did it or landing the job. No, you want to, you want to have mass success in all these areas here. Okay. Your invoicing, your uh, sending out proposals. That's another thing that a lot of people down here from a lot of customers that they having people come out and friends and my family. So it was like, Hey man, I had some people come out and I had three contractors come out and no one sent me a proposal. Right. So get a process down and everyone says, Hey, I'm busy. I'm this and that. If you want the job, you just do your paperwork. Okay. Uh, 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 returning phone calls, uh, giving customers updates. Okay. Calling them and giving them updates. Okay. Suck it up and call. Okay. So you need to reach mass success. See, I, back in the day when I was doing this, I was like, oh man, I landed this, I landed this job and I made this money. I'm ready. Let's go. And I, you know, I'm gun home. So I jumped into it, but I lack that sending invoices on time. I lack that sending proposals, you know, the same day that I went and looked at the job, which is good. Right. I lack that tracking job costs. Did I really truly make money? Right. Do I really know how to charge for my rates? Right. Do I really know how to uh, 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 account for the taxes that I have to make? So you need to hit these areas. OK, not just those areas. There's a lot of areas that you need to learn in business before you go off and, and quit your job to start your next construction company. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm a big fan of it. OK, go out and do it. You, you're going to regret it if you don't, if, if, if that's in you. But reach success in these different areas, okay? And a large amount of it before you leave that job, okay? Don't just go out and quit your damn job like that. All right, tip number three. You got to be good at problem solving and getting over obstacles yourself. This is very important here because, uh, especially if you add it along too, this is one of the things that stumps a lot of us, especially when we run into issues with customers. Run issues with customers, we go silent. We don't want to answer our phones. We don't want to. We don't want to address it. You got to be able to problem solve and deal with obstacles fast, because they're going to happen. And some of you have issues that you're dealing with owners right now and don't know what to do. Okay, you got to learn how to problem solve. Problems. One of the things that you problem solve is you communicate. Okay, communicate. Talk about it. Okay, reach out to people that 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 can help you on it as well too. You know, there was a job that I remember I screwed up on at Torrance. It was a pretty big job. Uh, the own the homeowner saved a lot of their money to get this work done. So I turned their whole backyard into uh, it was uh, two patio areas. It was one for the back door and one for a uh, bedroom that had a uh, a door on the side there. And um, I I screwed up. I messed up and messed them up big time. Okay. And um, uh, when I screwed up, I called in extra help to help me out on it. Now, in the end, I wound up paying out on those jobs. Yeah, so be, be good at solving problems, uh, okay, and getting over your own obstacles, especially with homeowners, okay? And I think a lot of times we think because we have been doing this forever and we know so much and, and, and it has went great for us at these other companies that, you know, we're not going to have to deal with anything because we have done things so right there or others have taken care of these problems for us right there's a lot of things where um what you're working for another company you don't have to deal with a lot of the bigger issues with these jobs because they got supervisors and project managers and superintendents to deal with it after a certain point so um 
a lot of times we don't get a lot of this experience on how to truly deal with issues, how to, how to problem solve, right? How to overcome obstacles, right? How to talk to a customer or how to talk to, you know, a, a top official in a company to figure out a better way to do it. Okay. And I had to learn that over time, especially with my body language, because I have wide shoulders, right? I'm a tall individual. Um, I'm a brother at times. Sometimes that plays a fact. You could be, you know, your nationality plays a fact. So you just got to know who you're talking to, how to deal with these personalities and how to get to the best solution the quickest way. Okay. So, uh, uh, uh and you got to, sometimes you got to teach yourself this, you know, especially with your body language, right. And the words that you're using, you have to teach yourself this. So that's another good tip to have. Okay, how to problem solve and overcome obstacles. And one of the things I learned out and I taught myself is how to negotiate, how to negotiate, help me learn how to navigate through these different things and deal with these personal, different personalities and how that, how to figure out a solution where everyone feels like they won. And I had to learn, I had to take the class on negotiation, learn, watch a lot of YouTube videos and things like that, you know, and that's what really helped me out. All right, number 10 here. Uh, don't quit your job before you start a business in itself, man. This is this is plain, plain. Don't just say, hey, you know what? Uh, I can do it. Uh, uh, and, and you haven't even started anything. You haven't even done no side jobs. You haven't even given it a shot yet. And then you're just quitting your job, you know, um, uh, unless you really have only you to take care of yourself. Um, then maybe you can do something like that, live in your car or, 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 or maybe um, have enough saved up. It, it, even if you have enough saved up, there's still not enough because it costs to learn. You will blow through that money so quick, you'll be amazed. Do not quit your job before starting your construction business. Do not, do not. Now, at the same time, don't, you know, freely use the, the construction company ex assets uh, or resources to fund your starting your business unless that owner is clear about it. I used to actually use um, the guy that, uh, that I wound up partnering with. I worked for him. I actually struck a deal with him to where I was able to use his renting equipment for a third of the cost, but I had to pay him cash. So I had a truck to tow the trailer and I use his skister or his backhoe and um, I pay him a third of the cost. I show him what the rental rate is and I pay him a third of the cost cash and I'll bring back that equipment back full. And I used to take pictures of the meter and things like that. And I have access to the yard at night, things like that. And it was, it was a great deal. And he loved it too. Longest I didn't interfere with, what was going on with that equipment. So I had to be in contact with everyone that was with that company and make sure that that equipment was available so I can go out and take it and do my own job. So you can do something like that, but try not to sneak off and take it and this this ask for things um, 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 and be straightforward and clear. Usually construction owners, usually they have also, you know, the way they started their business, they also know they needed help, you know, during that time. So sometimes they're willing to help you. And sometimes you just got to ask, hey, can I use this? Hey, can I use that? Hey, I'll pay you for this. What do you think about it? They may say, no, get out of my face. You know, some owners may feel like you're a competition. I don't know why, but there's plenty of work out here. That's why I do what I do is share what I share on my channel. There's plenty out here for everyone. Why, why act like you have the market, the market cornered? But I don't know, maybe the industry, maybe the city, maybe the state, maybe it's different circumstances, but you still want to, uh, you know, be careful in that. All right. Um, now, before you start your business, there's some things you need to realize that, hey, did you sign any non-compete agreements? You definitely want to look into that. Uh, what did you sign early on in your employment working for someone? Did you sign anything that may stop you or you may get sued starting something else? Okay. No one told me that either. So it's a tip that, you know, I realized over time, especially 
with uh, one of my last, one of my larger partnerships I started when we did an operating agreement. That's one of the things this lawyer put in there is uh, uh, it was a no, a no non-compete cause that allowed me to not go after similar type work for, I think it was like seven years after the partnership ended. And uh, because I known that and I did my research, you know, I, I told him to remove that altogether. No non-compete at all because this is my livelihood. This is what I do. I would do this before this partnership and I would do it after this partnership. So either you want to be in business with me or you don't. And so you have to realize that sometimes uh, uh, the non-compete didn't mean anything when you first got employed. And then now, since you've been working at this job for nine years, you're ready to start your own. You got to make sure that hey, that non-compete does not kick into effect after I leave this company because this company is afraid that I'm going to go take his customers and things like that. So you want to get a lawyer involved. If you do have non-compete, make sure they look at it. Make sure if it's binding in your state, some states, some employers do it, even though it's not binding in a particular state. So you want to have a lawyer look at it, pay the $300, $350, $250 um, to have a lawyer look at it if you do have a non-compete cause in your employment contract. Um, um, or non-disclosure agreement and, um, and, and make sure that you're protecting yourself in the long run. Because a lot of times when we start businesses, we start businesses in our line of field that we're currently in. And sometimes the customers ingle mingle, not to say that we're going to be taking work from each other, but sometimes the customers ingle mingle in some form or fashion in that line of work. So you want to make sure that um, uh, because you will not be the bigger fish at that time. The, your employer would probably be the bigger fish in that scenario. So you definitely don't want to get sued to where you automatically get put out of business because you're in court. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's make sure we take a look at that and understand that. Also, so as you guys know about the construction entrepreneur, uh, if you need help building your construction business, let us know. We can put things in place to help you learn about uh, everything that you need to know, whether it's estimating uh, profit percentages, how to figure out your profit percentage per each job. We have a system uh, uh, um, and it's a risk factor system. So it helps you to figure out your profit percentage, no matter what type of work you're doing, no matter what type of project you're on and, and to plug that in to actually land that job. Okay. Um, uh, uh, and we'll help take your business to the next level. You tell us what issues you're having and we'll give you solutions. If you feel like your, our solutions can help you take your business to the next level, then we have a deal. And that's it. If, if you give us your problems and we give you the solutions and they don't fit, then we're not a great fit, right? You find someone else or you try to work those things out on your own. But give us a call if you need help taking your business off to the next level. If you're looking to get your contractor's license in California, uh, you want to learn about estimating, you want to learn about more about your percentages that you feel that you're not accounting for for each project. You want to learn about why, how to track drop costs to know what you're making, how you're making it, things like that, okay? So check us out, give us a call, uh, make sure we can get you started. Don't forget to subscribe. If you watch this video, you gain something from it, you know, I took a lot of time to, to, to make this, provide this info, subscribe, like, and share. There's other individuals out there that need this information. Help us out to succeed as an industry, as an industry as a whole. We're all connected. The things you do affect me. The things I do affect you. Okay. What if you're in, what if you have become a construction entrepreneur or not? If you're planning to become a construction entrepreneur, I can affect, you know, you starting your business with the things that I don't know and can go out there and kind of, you know, put that down in the camera. So make sure you subscribe, like, share, check out the rest of the videos on my channel, and enjoy. And make sure you're not Remember, hustle hard, and hustle hard.